So two years ago, I came here to talk about how I sucked and uh, how I was really struggling to launch Crisis Text Line, that it had been two years and I couldn't get it off the ground. And I came here and I sat here and I said, is it me? Because I'm totally open to that. Um, is it us? Like, is it this community? Are we not nice to each other? And we kind of hold each other back? Or is it them? Is it the money? I have answers, and I'm going to share those answers at the end. But let me tell you what's happened. Because about two months after I was here, Crisis Text Line launched. Now, for those of you who weren't here, let me just quickly tell you the origin of Crisis Text Line. I'm actually the CEO of DoSomething.org. Uh, we have 3.8 million members. It's bigger than the Boy Scouts. Um, maybe because we're not homophobic. Uh, <laughs> And maybe because we use text messaging, that's how we communicate with our members. Uh, last year in 2014, we did over 10 million in revenue and we ran more than 200 campaigns. You guys are totally asleep. That was a good thing. Okay, whatever. Uh, I will wake you up. So, uh, and there are campaigns on things like, um, we run a campaign on hunger where we call the food pantries and we say, do you really need soup? Because everybody's collecting soup for you. And they say, no, no more soup, please. Um, we need non-perishable protein. So can you guess what that is? It's peanut butter. Yay, it's peanut butter. So we run a campaign called the PB and Jam Slam. The whole thing is, are you team crunchy or team smooth? So who is team smooth? Yes, you are correct. OK, so uh, <laughs> turns out two thirds of America's youth are team smooth. And in a month, we collect over 200,000 jars of peanut butter, yeah. right? These are big, that's a lot of smooth. This is a, these are big scale campaigns. And it's great, right? Um, we text message our members about it, text over indexes, Hispanic and urban. It has a 97% open rate. It's terrific, but we have this side effect, which is every time we text out about a campaign, we get back messages having nothing to do with peanut butter or hunger, but things like, I think I might be addicted to pot, what do I do? Or, um, the kids at school are really mean to me, they're bullies, I don't want to go to school tomorrow. And we were triaging these. We would say, like, here's the hotline, try this website, you can do it. Um, and then we got a message four years ago now um, that stopped us in our tracks. And um, it literally said, it said this, word for word, he won't stop raping me. It's my dad. He told me not to tell anyone. Are you there? And we were shocked, right? We were totally heart. Like, how could someone send something? How desperate do you have to be? How awful is it to send something so intimate, so personal, so horrific to strangers? And um, we were humbled. And we knew we had to do more than just triage this. We sent her the phone number for Rain, um, didn't hear back, sent it to her again the next day. And I will tell you, four years later, we've never heard back from her. I don't know if she's alive. I don't know if she's safe or healthy. And I talk about her story everywhere because I hope that she sees this and knows that her courage and her desperation inspired us to build Crisis Text Line. So it launched a couple of months after I was, I was here. So it's, it's less than two years old. Um, we launched it quietly in Chicago and El Paso. We pulled 4,000 mobile numbers in Chicago and 4,000 in El Paso from the Do Something base and texted them and said, if you or a friend needs this service, like here's the number, so they have to re-opt in. And in four months, we were in all 295 area codes in America. Okay? So. For those of you who pay attention to things like that, that's faster than when Facebook originally launched. And on one hand, yeah, you clap because it's like, whoa, that is, that's baller, that's huge growth. And on the other hand, think about it, zero marketing, none. It just means that people who are in pain are sharing this with other people who are in pain. So it turns out text is a phenomenal way to counsel. Um, it's private, nobody hears you talking on the phone, so we spike every day at lunch. Kids are texting us from the lunch table about their bulimia or about the kid who's being really mean to them right in that moment. We don't get the word um, like, hyperventilating, crying. We just get facts. They text us things like this. Uh, I want to die. Right then, first message. And so it's the job of our crisis counselors to figure out if they have the plan and the means. And she texts back, I have a bottle of pills on the desk in front of me. So the crisis counselor says, how about putting the bottle of pills in the drawer while we text? 
And where are you? I want to send help. And most people tell us where they are, because you're texting a hotline. Like, you, you want help. You don't actually want to die if you are contacting. And so they give us their address. By the way, if they don't give us their address, turns out some of Homeland is real, and we can figure out where you are anyway. That's a different story. Um, so uh, while the counselor is texting back and forth with her, the supervisor, who's an MSW or an RN, has triggered an active rescue with 911. And they're texting back and forth. And then all of a sudden, it goes silent. And for 23, probably of the longest minutes, there's just nothing. And then the next message come back saying, this is the mom. I was in the house. I had no idea. We're in an ambulance on our way to the hospital. I have to tell you, as a mother, that gets me every time I tell this story, because I, I, I can't imagine someone knocking at my door and saying, we're here for your daughter. Um, a month later, the next message comes in from the same account, all encrypted, by the way, but says, I just got out of the hospital. I was diagnosed as bipolar, and I think I'm going to be OK. Yeah. I, I would love to tell you that that's unusual, but 30% of our messages are about suicide and depression, 30%. And we're triggering an active rescue like that on average of 2.41 times a day. We are now doing over 20,000 messages a day. We've done a total of nearly 6.7 million messages in less than two years. OK? That's, that's big. That is scale. And I think it's beautiful, the kindness that strangers are showing other strangers by text. But the part that really gets me hot and sweaty is the data. So think about it. Um, these are all words coming in by text. So we're using NLP and AI to auto-tag these things in real time. And the data is making us better, and it's making the world better. It's making us better because when someone texts in, I want to die, they don't go chronologically in a queue, like when you call an airline to find out about a ticket. The algorithm reads that, makes them code orange, and makes them number one in the queue. So we can take people in order of severity, which makes sense. We can also do things like, because we have the volume, velocity, and variety of data, our corpus is really valuable. So we've started doing predictive work. So I can tell you that if you text in the words nums and sleeve, there's a 99% match for something. Can you guess? It's cutting. If you text in MG and rubber band, there's a 99% match for something. It's substance abuse. So think about that. We're now building a pop-up for counselors that says 99% match for cutting. Try asking one of these three questions. Or 99% match for drug abuse. Here's the three nearest drug clinics to your texter. This is not robots replacing humans. This is what technology was meant to do, make us faster and better. Because let's be honest, in this room, some of us have seen a shrink or a marriage counselor, and you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> because as we know, no one wants to talk about mental health. But uh, someone here has seen a shrink or a marriage counselor, and you have no idea if that person's any good. What, they have a degree from Harvard on the wall, so you think you're going to the right shrink? You don't know if he graduated in the bottom 10% of his class. <laughs> I once went to a marriage counselor with my husband, and um, we left that first session, and the marriage counselor looked at us and said, see you guys in two weeks, but Jason, I need to see you alone next week. And we walked out, and I was like, she's fucking brilliant. I love her. This is a great <laughs> marriage counselor. Um, we have the data to know what makes a counselor great or not. We also have the first real-time maps of crises in America. So if you go to crisistrends.org, you'll see that we've decided to make all of this information open and under a Creative Commons license for you. So we can tell you that, that substance abuse spikes at 5 AM. That Montana is a beautiful place to visit and a horrible place to live because it's the number one place for suicidal ideation. So think about this. It's not just anecdotes about things going on on Native American reservations. There's evidence that there's a real problem there and policymakers should be spending money to help people in Montana. I can tell you that the worst day of the week for eating disorders, anybody? Monday, by far. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. This is largely a family issue, a personal issue. But if you're a school administrator or a school board, think about what you're serving for lunch on Mondays. Make sure your guidance counselors are there on Mondays. This kind of information should change how police departments, school boards, academics, uh, journalists, researchers, everybody thinks. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about Crisis Text Line.
But if, thank you. But if, if PDF is the place uh, where the internet is some people's religion, I guess I kind of use it as a confessional. Because I told you that I had also figured out why the heck it took me two years. So I would say part of it is me. I have been doing Do Something and Crisis Text Line together, CEO of both, for two jobs, two boards, two 501c3s. Turns out that's not a good idea. So um, actually on Halloween will be my last day I Do Something and I'll just do Crisis Text Line and um, hopefully it'll make me a healthier, better leader also. Um, turns out some of it is us. There are these strange copycats that keep popping up. I have white labeled Crisis Text Line. So you can do text CHI, and it'll be for Chicago. Um, the one that makes me most nuts is there's a reproductive health organization that has a text line. It's only open business hours, because apparently nobody has sex at night or on the weekends. <laughs> um, hopefully, we will have convinced them to just use us for free, and we'll white label it. And the third one that we really ought to talk about is the money. So Ford, Carnegie, Rockefeller. I could go on with these names, but let's talk about the people not the organizations, the people loved risk. The people didn't just spend 5% of what they had, they pushed it all in. The people were bold, they laid train tracks where there wasn't even a map. They built entire operating systems, with the exception of a couple of foundations, Omidyar, for example, a couple of them, the Knight Foundation. Most of these other foundations just don't know what to do with us because we're starting new things. And the worst part is that sometimes they're not nice about it. I am shocked at how long it takes to get an email responded to. My request today is not to change the 5% rule. It's not to please fund me or spend more money. My request is that you treat founders and entrepreneurs as if your mother was watching. My request is that if we want the people's, the, the most impressive brains and the smartest people on the world's biggest problems, we need to stop treating new ideas and founders like the gum on the bottom of our shoes. Thank you.